Good morning. Uh, I'm told they're bringing more seats. So don't leave. Don't leave. Um, I wish they brought more air conditioning. Um, well, my answer to you right off the bat is that I am an optimist about the future of journalism. Uh, a cockeyed optimist, as we say in America. And I think that future is an entrepreneurial future. Uh, not institutional. That's not to say the institutions will die, but they have had, um, as of October, 16 years since the introduction of the commercial browser to change their world. And they've changed, but only so much. And so I think that the future is necessarily entrepreneurial, and that's why I teach entrepreneurial journalism. Indeed, if I were not an optimist about the future of journalism, I would be defrauding young people by teaching them in a journalism school. Uh, I, every year when we start the school, I try to scare the shit out of them um, by putting up all the figures about how bad things are in the business. And the first year, I was telling someone this morning, the first year I taught that class, I um, was going through this litany of all the shrinkage in journalism, and one of the students, honest to God, put her head in her hands and said, oh my God, I've, I've made a terrible mistake. I've come to the wrong place. I said, stop. No, it'll be okay. Um, and, and so, uh, what I then say to these students is that there is an incredible, uh, sorry, I gave my notes out, incredible opportunity to reinvent and create things. It's kind of awkward here, but I'm trying to ignore you here my back to you. Um, there's a chance to, to create things in this world. So I want to, I, I don't want to plug my university, but I want to give this context. We just announced uh, a few days ago uh, at, uh, at City University of New York grant from, from um, the Tao Foundation and the Knight Foundation to establish the Center for Entrepreneurial Journalism at CUNY, which I'll direct. And it has three legs to the stool. Uh, the first is education. We are going to offer what we think is the first uh, MA degree in the U.S. in entrepreneurial journalism. I'll tell you more about that in a second. We're going to continue the research that we've been doing about new models, business models for news. I'll tell you more about that in a second. And the third leg of the stool is we're going to incubate businesses and if I'm lucky and figure out all the legalities and raise a little more money, invest in new businesses in journalism. Uh, our, our goal is to say that the what Stanford and MIT in the U.S. bring to the technology industry, no one brings to journalism. And if there is a bright future for journalism, and if it is entrepreneurial, then we've got to build it. That's why I tell the students it's up to them. It's not a question of waiting and getting a job somewhere. They have to build it. And they have to create these new ventures and, and these new things. So I've been teaching this course at my school for four years now in entrepreneurial journalism. The students create a business plan for a sustainable journalistic enterprise. Um, by sustainable, I mean profitable. They come in, many of them, and they say, oh, it's okay, I don't have to worry about business, uh, we'll be not for profit. <laughs> no. Um, begging for money doesn't work uh, in the long run. It does maybe in the short run. And of course, we have a different structure in the US where we have so little government support for media, which I think is a fine thing. Uh, and we have uh, some more charitable support. Uh, we don't have the, we have more charitable foundation reflexes than you have in Europe. Uh, but nonetheless, we cannot rely on, I think, either charity or government or God to give us journalism. We have to build it. And in the discussion about the business of journalism, we've been concentrating really on just two aspects, two revenue streams, advertising and subscription. And what we leave out of this is the other side of the ledger, is the cost side of the ledger, and how much less expensive it can be to do journalism now because it can be collaborative and in the network and um, uh, targeted and specialized and efficient. And that sounds perhaps a little bit harsh to use the word efficiency in journalism, but I think that we uh, wasted a lot of money for many years. And, and again, I'm very, very conscious here of how different the US market is from European markets. Uh, in European markets, you've had robust national brands. You've had a choice and diversity of brands and voices in media. Uh, in the US, because of our distance, the New York Times could not become a national newspaper until the satellite came along to, to send its plates to printing presses across the country, uh, even before the internet, and that was in the 70s. 
So we have, we've had, in the US, once TV killed the second and third newspapers in towns, we've had monopoly newspapers. And those monopolies became one size fits all and uh, allegedly objective and boring and raised a lot of resentment in the market. I think there's more resentment about the papers in the US than there is uh, from what I find here. When I go visit um, Germany, for example, uh, I meet with the editors at uh, Die Zeit, and they remind me that their circulation is still going up. Congratulations. And it gets wonderful, and I know these markets are very different. But I think that the dynamics of the internet are universal. And when I speak even with uh, executives uh, about a few in India, where, of course, it, print is going up like crazy, and the World Association of Newspapers will say, print's fine, it's OK, it's right, it's growing somewhere. Um, uh, the smart executives there are saying, no, we can't rest on that. The internet is everywhere. It's going to be everywhere. We're going to have 3 billion people coming on mobile phones. This is going to change our world. So the question becomes, how we do this? And let me just give you the small laboratory of my class. Uh, in my class, students must come up with, as I said, a business plan for a sustainable journalistic enterprise. And um, I treat the definition of journalism very broadly. To me, it means that you help a community organize its information. Uh, I'm, I'm going to obnoxiously drop a name in a place right now. At Davos a few years ago, Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook was in a room with a bunch of media executives uh, about like this. Uh, powerful people. And it's off the record, but I asked Mark whether I could quote this story. I didn't ask the executive who was questioning it. A very powerful uh, newspaper executive, the scion of a major newspaper family in the U.S., uh, is near me in a new building people like to climb. <laughs> Did you get it? Um, begged Zuckerberg, just begged him and said, Mark, how do we get a community like you? We should be able to build a community like you. How do we do that? You own a community, we, we should, right? And Zuckerberg being, as I guess we'll see soon in this movie, uh, a, a geek of few words, uh, said in full, to this impassioned plea, his full response was, you can't. <laughs> and he did that kind of geek stare where it still makes you nervous, doesn't it? You know, keep staring at something, right? <laughs> and when he came back later and he said, you're asking the wrong questions, media executives. You don't make communities. Communities already exist. They're doing what they want to do. The question you should ask is, how do you help the community do what it wants to do better? And his prescription for that was that you bring the community, and I quote, elegant organization. I love that phrase, elegant organization. And isn't that, in a sense, what we as journalists uh, aspire to do, is to help a community organize its knowledge so it can organize itself, right? Now, the economics of this with the internet have changed radically. So just as people do not need us anymore to sell a car or a couch, they don't need us anymore necessarily to share what they know. The marginal cost of the community sharing information is zero. That could be scary if you think that you're a middleman and a gatekeeper in this process. And no, 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 that's what we do for a living. We print papers, no. We broadcast stories, no. We, we gatekeep information, no. The community can do that on their own. The question we as journalists have to ask is, where do we add value? How do we add value? And we can afford to do only that which adds value. If we waste our time and our resources anymore doing commodity journalism, repetitive journalism, journalism of stories you already know, production, that's where the waste is. There's incredible and huge waste. So, in my class, uh, sustainable journalistic enterprise. And I'll give you the list of what they have to do. It's very simple. It's the same for journalistic business as any other business. The first or thing they have to do uh, in the order of things, but it's the last thing they end up doing in the class, is their elevator pitch. And when they come in, I have a new crop of students right now, and they come in and they have a very loosey-goosey, unsure description of what they want to do. And it gets crystallized and focused more and more and more. And if you can't describe your business in a tweet, it's probably not a business. 